Hello and welcome to the next segment of Know Your O's. This is Dan Connolly with BaltimoreBaseball.com and I'm here with Orioles reliever Brad Brock uh, who is about to play the San Diego Padres um, and go back to San Diego as well for the first time in, in his career after leaving and being traded away from the, uh, from the Padres. First of all, Brad, I mean, this has been a pretty special season for you. What's it been like and, uh, and, and how, why do you think you've kind of made that, taken that next step this year? Yeah, it's, it's been a really great season so far. I think uh, just being able to be confident, that's been the biggest thing for me. I, uh, somewhere around the All-Star break last year, I just kind of you know, got to the point where I was like, why, why can't I be one of the better pitchers? Or why did I stop having an expectation of you know, being an All-Star type pitcher in my mind is um, been the biggest thing for me, I think. And just knowing that I have three plus pitches out of the bullpen is, I think that's kind of helped my confidence even more and just kind of allowed me to attack hitters and not walk guys, which I think has been a, was a huge problem for the last couple of years. Now, when you were traded out of San Diego, you had a couple decent solid seasons there, but you were traded out of there, and it was a trade that really kind of, you know, didn't really make the radar, if you will. Um, it was for Devin Jones, who actually ended up back in the Orioles organization, but he never really made the majors for, for either team. Um, and it's really been a springboard for you. What's it going to be like going back to San Diego, especially with you know the, the way you're pitching and, and how successful you've become? Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, it's it's been a date. Uh, me and my wife and my family have had kind of circled on the calendar, just getting to go back to the place where you know my major league career started and had a lot of good memories there at Petco Park, my first opening day and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's just uh, it's kind of one of those things. I think I just needed a change of scenery. You know, some new eyes on me. Some you know pitching coaches getting to see a different thing and. Uh, I sometimes think that's all it takes, and I think for me that was just the biggest thing. I made one mechanical change when I came over here, and you know, obviously the last couple of years have been pretty successful. So it's uh, it's exciting to go back there, and it's kind of one of those things you want to show off for the for the old team. So I'm looking forward to it. And there's not a lot of guys left from from that time no, over there, right? No, not at all. There's only a few left. There's uh, Andrew Kashner, Tyson Ross, and. Uh, Lexi and Reese, I think, are the only three on the active roster on the 25-40 man, actually, that I played with. Now, you've become a, a big part of this bullpen, and, and I think you know, there's a certain brotherhood in this bullpen, whether it's you and, and Zach or Darren or whatever. What, what's that kind of how, – how's that camaraderie kind of built over the last couple of years? Yeah, it's been it's, – it's awesome having the same guys there. You know, obviously the, the bullpens are never going to be the same, but we've kind of had the same core here for the last three years since I've been here. And, I think you just get to know each other every year. You kind of learn more about each guy, and instead of just being teammates, you become more friends. And I think that 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 helps a lot. And when the younger guys come up and they see the way me, Darren, and Zach are with each other, it kind of helps loosen them up and you know get to know us better. So I think that's the biggest thing. Zach and Darren just keep it real light down there. And I've learned a lot from them over the last few years. And like you said, it's just kind of like a band of brothers. You almost you become more than just teammates because you spend so much time together down there. So I think it's. It's uh, one of those things where the relationships grow and I think bonds form and you just really kind of band together and, you know, we haven't had the best starting pitching here, so I think it's kind of one of those challenges that we, we want and we accept and we've done a pretty good job with. Now you're a New Jersey guy, a freehold New Jersey guy. When people think freehold New Jersey, they think Bruce Springsteen. Yep. We're going to talk about music for a while here because uh, you have another little avenue to talk about. but. Springsteen and, and Brad Brock. Did you grow up a big Springsteen fan? Were you allowed to, to not be a big Springsteen fan from Freehold? What yeah, was that I like? think uh, I like the, the mainstream songs of his, and there's a couple that I, I enjoy from his you know major hits. Uh, I have some friends from college and stuff that I know literally every single word of every song he's ever sang. So if you're going out sometime, they, they'll find the E Street Band, like cover band, they'll go we'll go to the bar that, that they're singing at or something like that. And uh, I mean, I didn't grow up the biggest Bruce Springsteen fan, but obviously I know who he is and I respect what he's done. And I mean, even in New Jersey, New York area, anytime he has a concert, he sells out Giant Stadium every single time. He could, he needs any extra money, he calls up Giant Stadium and he sells out 100,000 seats. So it's pretty impressive. And uh, you know, being from the same town as him, I'm extremely honored to you know say we grew up in the same same area. And when he talks about my hometown or that song hometown, it, you know, I, some of the places he talks about, I can I can you know picture my mind. Uh, have you ever seen him in concert? No, I've never seen him, and I, I've heard he's unbelievable. And uh, they say he can still sing just as good as he did back in the '70s. So I, I would love to go see him. I just haven't had a chance to. Now, some people know this. Maybe not everybody does. He's not even close to your favorite musical performer. You have one that's a that's a lot closer yeah. than Bruce Springsteen. Uh, Janae Brock, Janae Cherry is your wife. Um, she's a country western singer. Really, I, I like to say a singer songwriter because I think her songwriting is, is pretty tremendous. Um, 
one of the interesting things for me about this is, is how you met her and, and knowing you and knowing kind of how a, a reserved shy guy you are uh, kind of <laughs> tell us a little bit about that yeah it was uh, it was interesting I was in AAA at the time and my best friend actually was in Nashville for uh, uh, just work and I was there for baseball and so after the games we met up and went down to Broadway and you kind of just do what the tourists do there you start at one bar and just work your way down the street and you know go see all the singing that goes on there so we're walking by this one bar and we hear girls singing so we figured why not go in there and check it out uh, we, end, we ended up staying there what we thought was gonna be only a couple songs we stayed for the whole night and by the end of the night I asked her to lunch the next day and you know we got to know each other and our relationship developed from there but yeah like you said I'm not the uh, most outgoing and uh, loud guy so thankfully I had my friend who's pretty he's a pretty loud mouth so he, he kind of forced the issue on me and I'm glad he did now she has an EP, she has an album and an EP out. The EP out just released this year, and um, there's a song on there that it's called "Hold Me," and it's a song she wrote um, for your wedding. And the first time you heard it was actually on the dance floor yeah, of your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> um, how is that? Because now she's got it out there on iTunes, and people are buying it, and people are using it for their own wedding. What's that like for you? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely interesting. When when she first did it, I was uh, I was extremely embarrassed. I'm not like I said, I'm not the most outgoing. I'm really shy, and obviously at the wedding, I wanted attention to be on her. And when she did that song, it was kind of a put on me and that day was just kind of emotional so obviously I, I tried to hide the best I could and I didn't want to listen to the words too much that first, that first day just because uh, there was a lot of emotions going on that day and I didn't want to you know harp on it too much so she was like yeah just listen to this verse coming up and it, it was really it was a really nice song and obviously I've gotten to listen to it a bunch over the years and like you said now that people are using it for their, their own weddings it's it's definitely one of those things that's interesting because it's a song she wrote specifically for me but now a lot of people can relate to it so I think that's the uh, the, the coolest thing about songwriting and you know just how music and words in the song can really relate to everybody even though it's about one specific person I think it's it's great for her and I'm glad other people are starting to enjoy it now too. Now she's actually sung at the Orioles uh, talent show um, yeah. but, but, but you you chimed in there a little bit as well right? Yeah uh, my first spring we had the talent show and Buck was like hey why don't you bring your wife to sing so my original plan was to have her just sing for the team and uh, I kind of told guys before that that was going to be what happened. They're like, you better not let her go up there and sing alone. You have to do something with her. So <laughs> she would always do these songs down in Nashville. She would do an Eminem song and a uh, B.O.B. song, um, Airplanes. So I just basically did the Eminem rapping part and, you know, kind of sang the rap part of the Airplane song. And she did her normal, you know, beautiful voice. And I just kind of talked, uh, <laughs> hopefully in tune, but uh, I kind of just did the talking for the rap part. But you have a you have a career in rap, right? This is not the first yeah. time you performed, correct? <laughs> yeah, my uh, when I was in middle school, actually, I was in music class, and I was in eighth grade. And one of the the projects we had was make your own song. So somehow, me and two other guys were on the basketball team, and we decided to make a rap song about our basketball team. And one thing led to another. The teacher who was in the class, he knew somebody who owned a studio, and he's like, "If you guys really want to make this a song, we can do it." So. We actually went to an actual recording studio and recorded a song, and it's kind of come back to bite me. But at the same time, it's eighth grade, so it's it's all fun, and I think the beat's pretty good. So, <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you heard it? When was the last time you actually listened to it? Uh, actually, Nick Hundley, when he got traded over oh, here right. from the Padres, he told them all, "Have you heard his rap song?" And he played in the locker room in 2014. So that was the last time I think it's been played. <laughs> and how terrible is it? It's pretty bad. I mean, <laughs> we call it rap. It's probably pop, and it's three kids who are still not at their peak puberty so there's some high notes hit and some squeaky voices so it's it's not the best now she's Janae's had a chance to watch your career flourish and you're trying to watch her flourish now yeah. and she's, she's doing pretty well how's that been I mean how cool is that that you guys kind of different careers but both you know kind of taken off a little bit yeah it's awesome I think it's one of the things that uh, attracted us to each other in the first place when I saw her in Nashville I kind of equated it to being AAA in music and obviously the paths of uh, music isn't exactly black and white as it is in baseball sometimes but yeah it's been it's been great it's, I'm glad she's been here for the ride and I'm glad I've got to see her you know make two or three albums now and play numerous shows and you know to see her family and how proud her parents are of her is, and I think she kind of sees the other side of my parents and my family how proud they are to buy of me and it just kind of uh, it's been great getting to see something I knew nothing about the music industry and now you know People come to me asking me about songs, about, you know, what do you think about this, what do you think about that, and I can I have a little bit of an insight just seeing what she goes through, and I think it's been awesome for our relationship just because we can relate on so many different, you know, things when it comes to chasing a dream. 
How much did you want J.P. Aaron Sibia to make this team a couple years ago? Yeah, when he, that was interesting. He, uh, somebody had told him that my wife's thing, and obviously she's on a little bit different of level than today, but it's still, it was interesting just to kind of hear his perspective and how much she, she was into the music writing and with her brothers and how much they travel for music and all that kind of stuff. It was definitely interesting to see what the next level for Janae could be like. Right. We were talking about J.P. and Aaron Sibia's wife is, uh, of the band Perry, yeah, the lead yeah, singer yeah. of the band Perry. Um, now you've been in Baltimore for a while. Is there places that you like to kind of hang out in, in Baltimore? Is there certain restaurants or anything you like to? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've gone to uh, Abbey Burger a bunch, and I really like that good pizza. Being from New Jersey, I think you have to like pizza, and they have a real thin style crust pizza that uh, me and Janae both like. She she wasn't the biggest fan. She's from the Chicago area, so she's used to the huge thick pizza. And when uh, we went back home to New Jersey a couple times, I've introduced her to the thinner crust and. She started to like it, so we, we go to Bagby Pizza whenever we get an off day, or like I said, Abbey Burger, and we, we don't really venture out too much, but when we do, uh, there's there's a lot, definitely a lot of places that are good. When you get a chance to go out, are there some of the guys that you like to hang out with? I mean, has she become real good friends with any of the guys? Yeah, she's uh, she's become real good friends with like uh, a couple of the, the wives and girlfriends, TJ McFarlane, Kevin Gosman's fiance, uh, yeah, uh, Liz O'Day. There's, she's, she's. Uh, almost, I tell her she's almost too friendly sometimes because <laughs> every off season we have like ten weddings to go to. It seems like so. She, I mean, she's become real good friends with almost all the girls who've been here. But she doesn't have to sing at any of those weddings. No, no, she doesn't sing. She gets to go and enjoy it. She's. Uh, I don't know when the last wedding she sang at. I think one of her cousins uh, had her sing a song or two. But she mostly gets to enjoy the weddings, and she likes those things. She, she's a typical girl. She loves the, uh, <laughs> you know, the wedding day. So. And she was told she couldn't sing at your wedding, correct? Yeah, I told her do not sing live at the wedding because I we watched a reality show with uh, uh, Jesse James and Eric Decker, and she sang at their wedding to him. He's a receiver for the Jets, and I was like, you do not do that. If you do that, I'm walking out of this out of the venue. And so she didn't sing live, but she did sing a song that I had never heard. So it was it was close enough without really breaking that rule. So she she bent it a little bit. Kind of wrap up for me this season for you. I mean, how, how good do you think this team can be? And, and especially how, how much do you think this bullpen can really propel this in the next step? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's only a matter of time before the starting pitching gets going. I, I think in 2014, we kind of had the same thing. Couldn't get starters deep in the games. And then somewhere in the middle of June or July, they hit a stride. And they were probably, I think, top five in the ERA for starting pitching the rest of the, rest of the season. I think it's, it's only a matter of time before that happens. You know, uh, a couple of the guys are younger, and I think they're going to hit their stride. So... Uh, I hope they get going, and I think when once they do, it's going to make our bullpen, bullpen even that more effective. When you can take me, Mike, Darren, Dylan, you know, throw us in there, any any combination of the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth inning, and then get the ball to Zach in the ninth. I think we have a real good shot to win, and uh, I think it's going to come down to September. We play everybody in our division a bunch, and yeah, I think if we're within striking distance, I think we can win the division. And, once you get to the playoffs, so, you know, like Buck always says, he just wants to roll the dice in October. And I think when we get there, we have the bullpen and the hitting and, you know, good enough starting pitching to get it done. Okay. This is Dan Connolly with BaltimoreBaseball.com and, and Brad Brock. Thanks a lot, Brad. Really right, appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me.